skills. Passion. Commitment. <laughs> Yo mate, what up? Welcome to another lawn tip vid. Alright, today's video we're going to be looking at pH and a way to test it in your yard. And I've just got a test that I got from Bunnings that I'm going to use today. But the reason I'm doing this today is because a few people have been asking me on Facebook and inboxing me and saying, how do I check my pH, how do I raise it or lower it, or how do I do this, this, this. So basically I'm doing this video today for those guys. I'm going to do a more in-depth video in the near future. I've actually sent a test away to a lab somewhere out there but we'll find out those results when I get that test result back and I'll put a video up more in depth on soil pHs and ways to amend things in your soil. So first off let's just get a soil sample and check our pH of our soil with this kit. So I've got this plugger just here and I'm going to get a soil sample out of the ground with this plugger. If you don't have a plugger you can just use a shovel but what we want to do is go to at least 100 mils in depth if not 150 mil. Really you want that sort of sample about that depth because we want to get to the root zone and get a pH sample from that root zone. Plug and we will go. Oh, plug and we will go. All right, so now we've got that plug out. That's about 100 mil there. You can see some roots just in the bottom there. Let's just pop it out. So now what I've got to do is break a little bit off the bottom and actually start to do some things with this soil test. Alrighty, so let's do our sample right now. You can see how good I'm cleaning it up from other people's places I've done it. Doesn't matter though. So this is gonna tell us what our pH is at. That's the um, colors there. So obviously we want to aim to get our grass, or our soil, sorry, to be between six and a half and seven, which is neutral. Put a little bit, about half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of your dirt down there, or your soil, whatever you want to call it. Next thing we want to do is get this indicator liquid and mix it in with the actual soil. Just a couple of drops, or I'll make squillion drops. And then we give it a mix, make a little paste. Oh, come on, let's put a bit more on there just because. And then next step is you just put on this white powdery stuff. And you just let it sit there for a minute until it changes colour. Just while we're waiting for that as well, I prefer these soil tests, these ones with the liquid over the little probe ones that you can get from Bunnings and places like that, just because I find them more reliable. I've seen a lot of those tests with the probes actually not be the correct soil pH, like it doesn't measure your pH correctly, unless you get a really expensive one. If you get a cheap one, I find sometimes you just get different results. So I'd recommend this little soil kit. It cost me about $20 and I it works pretty well. Now I'll be interested to see what the difference is when I actually get my test results back from the lab. It sounds so professional. But I'll be interested to see if my lab results that come back from my soil that I sent in actually comes back with the same pH result as well. Alright, so it looks ready now. So let's just compare it on the chart. I don't know if you guys can see the colour of that very well. Oh, I'm dropping it everywhere. Here's our colour chart just here. So that's our colour there. You see our chart here. I'd say that is about six and a half, which is perfect. Can't seem to find where this plug goes now. Nope, that's not a hole. Oh, I should have put a marker down somewhere. Where was I standing when I did it? Ah. All right, so you might be asking yourself, what is soil pH? Well, basically your soil pH is just measuring the acidity or the alkalinity of your soil. So zero being acidic, and 14 being alkaline. So you basically want your soil acidity to be neutral or just below neutral. So you want it to be at 6.5 or at seven. As we saw from my results, we actually got a 6.5, which is pretty much perfect. So slightly acidic, which is what the professionals recommend 
which is great. So that's why it's quite easy for me to grow a nice, thick, luscious lawn because it's actually able to access all the nutrients in the soil. Now the reason why we don't want extreme pH levels in our soil is because it can actually make a really weak turf grass. So a low pH would be about three, that's probably as low as your soil gets, and a high pH would be about 10, which is as high as your pH normally gets in your soils. Now if you do have a higher pH in your soil, you will realise that you probably see like a yellow cast over your whole lawn and you probably get yellow leaves as well on your turf grass and the reason for that is because you have an iron deficiency. So when the pH is that high, your actual turf grass can't access the iron that is deposited in the soil. So let's just have a look at this chart just here. Ow, magic. So as you can see, 6.5 to 7, all the nutrients are quite easy to be accessed by your turf grass plant, whereas if you get lower a lot of nutrients can't be accessed and higher, it's the same thing. So that is why we want it to all be sitting smack bang down the middle and neutral or slightly acidic so you can access all of those macronutrients and all of those micronutrients as well. So also if your pH is off as well, that actually affects the microorganisms that are in your soil. So they're the things that basically make your soil nice and strong and break down the organic matter in your soil or under your turf grass. So if we don't have the best pH and that's going to affect our soil conditions as well which in turn makes your whole yard look nasty as well. So that's another reason why we want our pH to be in the correct zone and you'll find if you're having problems in your backyard with things like yellowing off or you just got really thin patches of grass in certain areas and you can't figure out what it is and it's not fungal and it's not to do with localised dry spot or anything like that, you may have problems with your pH. So it's always good to check those areas with the pH tester. Now your pH level over time is gonna fluctuate, like it's never gonna sit at the same level. So that's why it's always good to do a yearly test. I'd recommend at the start of spring to actually do a pH test on your soil or even do a, send a, a sample away to a lab like I'm doing. I'm gonna get some awesome like insights into what's in my actual soil in the ground. So if you do have problems with your pH that are too high or low, there are a couple of ways to fix that problem. So if you have really acidic soil, like in four or five, even at six and you want to raise it up to the 6.5, you can use things like lime. Now lime is pretty common in raising soil pH. Now it won't be an instant thing, it will take a couple of months for that to come into effect, but it will work. So there are a couple of type, different types of lime. There is dolomite lime, which has some magnesium in it as well. Now, generally, if you have low pH, magnesium is going to be struggling a bit in your lawn as well. So that's a good way to substitute it in with that dolomite lime. Now, it's, these are actually available in powdered form or granular form. I would be going for the granular form just because it's going to be easier to put out with your spreader. If you're going to do it with the, the actual powdered stuff, I'd actually get like a drop spreader and use one of those. And do not doubt that it isn't windy and make sure you water it afterwards, otherwise you're going to have problems with it just going everywhere and getting up your nose and it's just going to be a mess. But you do not want, man, that'd be nasty. Now if you want to lower your soil pH, it's a little bit harder to get your soil pH to be lowered. I always say that it's easier to get your soil pH to go up and it's always quite a bit harder to get it go down, to go down. So consider yourself lucky if you do have pH that is lower because you're going to be able to fix it a lot easier. Now there are a couple of ways that work but these are going to take even up to a matter of years sometimes. Now organic mulches and organic fertilizers and peat moss are going to be one way that you can raise, sorry, one way that you can lower your pH in your soil. They are going to work, they're going to take a couple of months, sorry, they're going to take a couple of years which is scary. There are other ways to do it as well. Sulfur is a very common one. So sulfur will help do that. They're actually going to be a little bit quicker than your organic roots of doing it, but it's still going to take a growing season or more. So some people use ammonium sulfate, liquid sulfur and powdered sulfur as well. Thanks so much guys for watching. I really appreciate you guys watching and supporting me along the way. If you enjoyed that video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button and you have a good week. Yeah. Yes. Winter grass is dying. She is dying because it doesn't like the heat of the sun. Just made that up. You impressed?